Hi, this is Emily of Beauties and Head Cannons. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. What's up, everybody? This is Christian Heimel, host of Press Row here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Press Row, where we talk about the biggest issues in sports with the analysts, experts, and reporters who cover them. No nonsense, hard-hitting interviews on the sports topics you're talking about. A new show comes out every single Thursday. And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Press Row. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Media back with another Chipotle cup. It's a fresh one because I'm basically on an all Chipotle diet. Anyway, I hope it sounds okay. And let us all take a minute to share the show. I'm going to do that because I need it to go onto my page, not just public health media's page. Because last week when I was on Catalina, I couldn't like do the, the sharey thing that I normally do. And it's sucked. Sucked that I couldn't do that. And it sucked that oh, the internet connection out there is although better, better than it was. And I'm very impressed with their improvement. Um, it's still not, it's still not okay. Okay. Post, shared, posted, dunsies. Okay. So, oh, First of all, I need to issue an apology to the Burbank Police Department. I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> I'm very hungry, and Sue and I pulled in Chipotle, and that parking lot is like bumper cars this time of day. And I saw a spot, and I just zoomed. I just took it. I just got up in there because, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And they're the police. Turns out the police love Chipotle. Um, there was a big, like, the SUV police car parked next to me, and I was like, mm, I feel like I'm parked a little bit close to him. A little bit close to him. And I like, straightened out. Like, well, I mean, this is as good as it's going to get. Like, I'm still inside the lines. So go in, eat, do the things. And I see the two police officers get up to go out to their car, and I was like, that's a really tall man. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to make it in his car or not. I should probably say something. And I didn't. So I apologize for that. I didn't say anything. And then we came out and I was like, oh, wow, the police are still here. He's like, I had to crawl through the, I had to crawl through the passenger side to get in, to get into the car. And I was like, I'm really sorry. I was on the line and it's still not enough room. He's like, yeah, you're right. It's not enough room. I'm like, thin blue line, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But they were okay with it. But I still feel bad because I should have said something. So I deeply apologize to the Burbank Police Department for my uh, for my tight parking job that they did not deserve in their evening. They have enough problems on the mean streets of Burbank without me parking too close to their vehicle. So sorry, guys. Oops. Anyway. I wanted to read, now that, now that we have a formal apology to the Bur Burbank Police Department on the way, I wanted to talk about this article. Hello, David Bogsy. How does it sound? Tell me about the sound coming from me. And also about my janky lips. Oh my god, my lips are in such terrible shape from the last few weekends. They hurt. I can't even explain to you how unappealing they are. I'm over here like like this, just smashing lip gloss on all day long. Not enough. Not enough. I need like 24 hour glossing. Any hoozles. So this came from yesterday um, on AV News. And other places covered it too, but I thought this was the most relevant. So here it is. There's the AV News thing. The women artist who got a serial sexual harasser fired from Nickelodeon made a cartoon about it. 
sound a little faint. Hopefully that's okay. So you podcast listeners can't see this, but I suggest you look it up because it's really adorable. So it's like these four four lady stick figures with stars on them. Uh and it says, unless I pull frontal with Samantha B and that she's getting a little hashtag me too fatigue. Understandable. That's <laughs> that's understandable. It's exhausting and demoralizing to trot out the details of these de- depressingly similar cases again and again and again with little evidence that things are improving. Although that I, I disagree with. I think if you run around town um, and talk to people or just feel their energy, I do think things are improving and people are taking it seriously. And they're printing the stories, which was unheard of, you know, over, you know, two years ago. So it wouldn't have happened. It was just like a switch flipped. Um, so in order to shake things up and give survivors a chance to tell their stories, their own stories, she invited a handful of female animators onto the show to explain how they worked together to get a serial harasser fired. The reason why I thought this was really, it's interesting in its own way, but this next part is what really took me in. Uh, back in 2017, storyboard director Katie Rice, art director Paula Spence, and storyboard artist Megan Nicole Dong and Ashlyn Anstey all joined a private Facebook group for women in the animation industry that started up after the first wave of hashtag MeToo movement. Fairly quickly, women started sharing their own stories of abuse and one particular name kept popping up. Uh, as we re- reported when the story first broke, um, Loud House creator Chris Savino had a decades long history of making unwanted advances and threatening retribution against previous sexual partners. Savino has since been fired by Nickelodeon, but the story of how these women worked together to get him removed from the animators guild and more importantly, make sure everyone knew about his actions is an inspiring one. All of that's true. And I've heard of this working before. Um, A couple years ago, there's some really great Facebook groups for like women in the industry and it's not just you know not just Hollywood people but you know New York or other like tertiary secondary tertiary markets or even around the world um in the improv community there was a woman's Facebook group just for those ladies that are you know at Groundlings, IO, uh, Second City you know these types of places I hope I'm not forgetting Groundlings, IO, Second City I'm sure there's more in there um but and they uh they ended up ousting a improv team coach collectively and i think the privateness of a facebook group like so long as there's nobody screen caps anything um the privateness of a facebook group really helps because you can have all of this you know facilitated conversation and the admins are like watching who's getting in and watch you know and can see everything so it can't just be anybody you know it's not like just posting on a public facebook and they're like blah 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 about this person like it's fair game like they had the it was kind of like their own little meeting space um where they could compare notes and as i've said on this not one time but probably a facility by now that there's never just like one victim it's like a string never just like they don't it's never an isolated incident it's never just a one-time thing it's always always um happens one time they get away with it they feel emboldened they feel empowered they do it again and it just becomes this habitual uh you know behavior that just happens over and over and over and over again to quote charlie murphy habitual line steppers um, a la Rick James. <laughs> maybe the, maybe the, maybe the first. <laughs> David Bobby, that's really funny. I was thinking an improv coach is less of a yes and more of a no but, or possibly a no but T, <laughs> no B U T T. I guess. That's 100% true. There was like, uh, think you next. Um, which was interesting, but I remember um, a couple guys in that and you know in that community getting worried that people were going to say things about them or whatever. But it ended up working out in everybody's favor. So if you're in an industry and you're like, we got some bogeys in here and we need to nick some, a Facebook group could work for you. It could. 
I mean, I'm not saying that you need to make a full cartoon and do full, you know, get, get an animatic and get a full animation going. I'm not saying that you need to do that, but a Facebook group can be very, very useful under these circumstances because you can compare notes in a, a controlled environment. And that is very, very useful to those sorts of people. So good for them. Very cool of Samantha B for hosting that situation. And as I've said on this show before, Nickelodeon is a below scale network and they do not have the money or the time or the energy or the wherewithal to be protecting anybody because uh, they're just not about that life. So they're more than happy to even preemptively fire people or be like, you need to leave. You need to go. Bye. Like they will, they will show people the door so, so, so fast. And like their feet is really, really held to the fire because it's a kid's network. Like, I don't remember if I've said this before or not, but even if you're so much as an extra for a half a day on a Disney or Nickelodeon TV show, you have to pass a background check, which doesn't really, um, doesn't, it's like you don't have to do that with any other network. Like there's plenty of uh, unsavory characters with records, like criminal records, um, picking around, picking around sets, but um, for Nick or Disney, because it's a kid's network, they don't they don't subscribe to that you gotta go and they really don't care you'll just get somebody else which is cool i think um <clears throat> i think we need to stop acting like people are so irreplaceable because they are like somebody's been around for a long time they're like oh, but this person they're iconic like whatever there's new icons coming every day every single day there's new ones like there's really no reason to keep anybody around <clears throat> brian singer so, you know, why not? Speaking of keeping people around, um, this isn't really necessarily like a topic of the show, even though I did um, talk about Brody Stevens the day uh, he decided to leave us. So that was a Friday. So I did the show, you know, basically hours after um, the news came out. But uh, his... A couple things have been happening with that. Um, this past Monday was his memorial service at the comedy store. And then the week prior to that was the, um, a fundraiser that they had for him to raise money for his, you know, final expenses and for his family. And the comedy store raised $40,000 for Brody's family, which is really, really, really amazing. Um, and so wonderful. And uh, I think a big shout out to Steve Simone is required because he's just an awesome human all of the time, no matter what. But he really, really uh, steps up to the plate and shines so brightly in times of crisis. He's just such an awesome person. So shout out. To, I wish I could give him a gift. Like, have a gift. You're amazing. You're the best Steve Simone ever. Um, and I think it's important in the era that we're tearing a bunch of people down. Most of them are rightfully so, but we're um, getting rid of the bad and rewarding, not well, rewarding, but promoting and talking about the good people that are here. And one of the ways that you see that is, you know, from these memorial services that happen because Hollywood unfortunately claims a lot of lives, which is terrible, and I hate every second of it, but that's the way that it is. And although I am not at all surprised that everybody came out for Brody for his memorial service, like he is a very, very, very well loved person. And there was no shortage of people that loved Brody Stevens. There was just a shortage of love that Brody Stevens had for Brody Stevens, um, which is so, so terrible and so heartbreaking on it, you know, on its own. But everybody, uh, uh, you know, obviously everybody came out and, you know, raised $40,000 from the week prior, but um, for his actual memorial service that the comedy store had, the first time in the history of the store that it's ever been closed, um, not, not for when Richard Pryor went, not for when Robin Williams went. Um, I was there for that, Stephen Paciano. 
and so different. Like, I mean, people came out for Robin Williams. Like, don't get it twisted, but it was a completely different, completely different situation. I don't, I don't know if somebody said it on Twitter, but Brody Stevens was your favorite comic, favorite comic. And that's 100% true. And everybody was so, so very upset about him, just the thought of him being gone, let alone the reality of it. But we went really early and sat with uh, uh, Brian Redban and his girlfriend for a while. Um, but much like when we did Robin Williams' memorial, I just we went super early and was just sitting there and I was just watching the room fill up to the ceiling, basically, like very slowly. And at first, you know, you start seeing your friends come in and like, oh, hey, this person, this person, and this person, and then you see, you know, people that you've done a pilot with or some bizarre movie with or whatever, like, oh, these people, great, whatever. And then you look up and you see Ed Helms and Zach Galifianakis and Dr. Ken and Bradley Cooper all come in seemingly together. And it's just, it's a wild, surreal experience that you wish that you never had to experience, but you're in it and there's no way out and you just have to like roll with it, basically. Um, there wasn't a dry eye in the place, like, expectedly enough but and of course like i feel my own way about him going and he's like if you drive by the store every day like you can see like the marquee with his name on it it's just like <clears throat> it's like being stabbed all over again but it's really like, i never thought i was gonna like it's really hard to watch like other people be sad like people that you think or you feel like are a rock <laughs> Or, or not even a rock, but like they've always, you know, they've always got it. They're, you know, they're always a master of what they're doing. Just like completely break down in tears and, you know, cry like a baby, basically. Like watching, if you don't know, like watching Zach Galifianakis cry in grief is one of the most heart wrenching things I've ever seen in my life. And it wasn't just him. I was like, the, the whole place was standing room only. It was, um, a really beautiful, incredible send-off, and they did such a gorgeous job with it. Um, they had all, all of these, like, Brody accoutrements, like, laying around, like, all a bunch of stuff, uh, <laughs> stuff from the valley, <laughs> like, different, <laughs> different streets and stuff, and then, like, a bunch of brands came out for it, like, they had, Brody was a big fan of, like, fast food and Starbucks and stuff like that, so, they had Burger King came in with stuff, and then Starbucks. Starbucks won up everybody. You know the like the sleeve that they like the paper sleeve that they put over the club. They put his name on it. They need they need T-shirts. He had pins, like just an infinite. Like if you've never been <laughs> to a memorial service with an intermission, catering, and uh and and merch. <laughs> swag like you haven't you haven't seen anything yet you haven't seen a, a Brody Stevens level send off which you know I wish that wasn't the case I wish it never happened but it it, it did it had to so something we're all still dealing with but the level of support and love that I saw that night especially because we were sitting like right on like right like this like right over or his mom and his sisters. Um, everybody was just there for them, and everybody had a story for them. I think I think Dixie and Dykes was there. He was a big fan of Brody. <laughs> like just all of these, the range. That was like like a running joke of the night. Like the range of this guy, the range. Everybody loved him. Um, was really, really incredible. Although awful to have to experience. Um, that's what. Brody decided for himself, and that's his choice, I guess, unfortunately, but it it was a packed, packed, packed house. We were in the main room, but even the belly room upstairs packed, the original room packed, and they were, like, broadcasting it throughout the different rooms. Even as easy hosted the first part, which I thought was an interesting choice. I'm not totally sure if it would have super close or not, but um, we can watching Steve do it, he did a fine job, but that's who they chose. And I thought it said a, a lot about redemption um, to choose him for this, for 
for this undertaking. And, you know, if it were a couple years ago, like, even so much as saying she's going to be <gasps> tabooness, and now he's, you know, with the help of Jeffra, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's building it back up. Because somebody asked me, I forget who it was, somebody asked me the other day about, like, you know, like, what would be really, really damaging to somebody? And the answer is not much. Like, all press is good press for the most part. Like, it takes a lot to really, really, really damage somebody. Um, if they're beloved enough and if they're talented enough. But if they're not, it's a different thing. Like, and really, too, like, Harvey Weinstein would still be going if the, if the contract, if his employment contract from Weinstein comes to get, oh, bring it here, bring it! Oh, thanks for coming in. But the point is, is that if Harvey Weinstein's employment contract with the Weinstein company didn't come out and it didn't say, it didn't implicate the Weinstein company in his exploits, but it did because it said he could basically run around and do whatever he wanted so long as he paid for his own legal fees and that the company wasn't responsible for it. So they knew what they knew what he was up to. So did Bob, even though Bob kind of come out of this tarnished but you know he's not he's not in lock up or anything but Bob and Harvey Weinstein are not beloved people because they were a bunch of dick bags to everyone that they could find they were a dick bags too so as, as soon as that first that first brutus stab came everybody was like get him it's a free for all how exciting um but if you're if you're that beloved and that talented, you got to do some really 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 terrible stuff to 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 not find redemption. And like arguably, like Steve, I mean Steve Renegade is what he is, but like to lie about your involvement in 9/11 to get you further in the casting room, and then like it come out, you admit it, and you do the whole thing, like. That's a bit, that's a bounce back, dude. That is a bounce back and a half. Um, although I will say that that didn't necessarily hurt anybody when being a sexual predator does. It absolutely hurts people physically, mentally, spiritually, like all those things. Um, that's, that's a whole different situation, but Depending on the person, that, you know, there's still people defending Bill Cosby, there's still people defending Michael Jackson, there's, you know, people that don't even know these people, and <laughs> they have no definitive proof one way or another, they're still, you know, carrying, you know, you know, flying their innocent flag, so, you, you have to do some really, really, really heinous stuff to get hung up for good in this town, I guess, because everybody loves to, I think it's so obsessed with having a getting an apology, like, I want to be apologized to, like, that's, uh, people are, like, acting like it's, like, lifeblood or something these days, and it's not, it's most certainly not, but people seem to love it, but apology tours from people seem to be very depressed, of, like, oh, I'm so sorry, and I'm working on myself, and I'm going to rehab, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing, like, just, you know, the same script that everybody spits out over and over and over and over again, seems to be working because these people come back which i mean it's, it's funny but it's kind of a weird practice though, because especially if you look at somebody like louis ck you think he's like incredibly talented but he has been flinging his awkward dick at people in hotel rooms on tour for as long as i can remember like you, if you you kick around in any of the comedy clubs you're going to hear some weird louis ck penis stories it's going to happen to you just ask around the dick out here in these streets, trash, okay? Trash. You will hear about it. <clears throat> but he is really crazy talented. And he just kind of shuffled through it and he's not owned by anybody. He, you know, finances his own stuff basically and he's back doing stand up and people are happy to see him. Although I will say that um when he although you should not masturbate in front of people when they don't want you to. You shouldn't do that. That's a no-no. But I will say that other people have done far worse <laughs> and, and gotten away with it. So, I don't know. Maybe things are relative, maybe you're not. I think it depends on the person. But I will leave you, I will leave you with that. Redemption is a 
it's a strange, weird thing in this town, and people keep asking me about it, and I don't really have an answer other than it depends on how beloved you are, how talented you are, and, you know, how ride or die for, you know, for the, you know, for the fans are, because, they, you know, they might be, or they might just be like, oh, God, no, ditch, thank you, next, the end. So that is, that is the conclusion of this week's, um, you know, Focus Friday, and I wish that, I wish that I was not talking about Birdie Stevens Memorial Service, because that is, uh, terrible that it had to happen, although it was a really incredible display of, uh, love and affection and, uh, cooperation that does not happen around here very much, but I wish that, um, it didn't require losing somebody to accomplish that. I wish they just did it all the time because it's so wonderful and amazing, not because we have to. So anyway, that is that. Check out other shows on Public House Media. Um, there's, there's some new ones. Bax is doing some new ones or since one that I never mentioned before is, um, I don't think I've mentioned all of them. That's not true. Um, so like Sound and Danger, Coffee with Keith and Katie, and Choose to Rise, and all of, all of these fun shows that are not as dark and twisted as mine. So go check those out, and if you're a podcast listener, leave like a rating or some stars or a comment or something, and that would be lovely. And of course, like share, share, share it around, share it around, whoever, you know, everybody's talking about me too, so share share these and i will see you all next week for another no filter fighting bye 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 bye